This Gabriel shoot is why I suck. Go ahead. What's up? What's wrong? That's on the head. Hmm? Didn't you eat before you left? You only get one meal. You get the meal when you come back. You could have, what we could have did was give you a sack. We gave you a hot tray. Let me get a second. You got what you got, man. Food service is closed. No. All right. All right. You need some what? The shower shoes. Oh, I got everybody shower shoes done. Don't do that, cause you lose your level. What level are you? Cup tour hostage. All right.
Put it back. Hit the lens. Why do you think um, the kids happen to relate to you and Eric? Is there something about you guys, something you say that you think the kids maybe relate to you guys a little bit more? Well, hopefully I have a, my background comes from, my father was incarcerated all my life for 20 years. So um, I could, they, by talking, I, I guess they understand that I'm real with them. And it makes a difference when talking to them and they can re actually relate to me. And most of the stories I, I understand, I've been through there. So talking to them, I, it's a, we can we connect, we connect. So, what do you think it is that people don't know about these kids that maybe you do know? You know, seeing them inside. Well, seeing them in here, that most of them are they just want somebody to talk to. A lot of them are come from a single parent's family, and which I did too, and they're missing a father figure in their life, and that's what a lot of the kids and the, the, the treatment teams we have and we have they 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 wanted the sharing to, they wanted to let their feelings out and get them in, into this type of environment. And most of the time they do. You know, they just have nobody to talk to. So what are some of the good things and some of the bad things you've seen in your time working in this unit? Working in the unit, you have some kids not willing to let go of their feelings and not willing to open up. And that's probably the bad part, um, that you know that some kids, when they leave out of here, they have no positive role models out there. And that's where our job is to do, is to lead them in the right direction when they leave here. Um, positive is that um, leading, when I see a kid leave here and we actually, when they call back and say they're in school or they're, they're about to go to the service, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a blessing to me. Do you ever, you know, really kind of connect maybe with one or two kids a, a, a little more specially than others? You know, it's, sometimes it's hard to get All of them. Well, I mean, if I connect with one out of 24, that's, that's an accomplishment for me. If I can get one to open up his eyes and get his heart and his mind right, that's an accomplishment for me. Knowing your background and knowing what you went through, mm -hmm. how is it you know that you were able to overcome that? I have positive people in my in my life. I think my mother played a good role in it. I mean, she's positive, and I didn't want to be locked up for the rest of my life. And I've seen what disasters it, it could be. And I was a father at an early age, 16 years old, and I didn't want my kids to come see me locked up in prison. So how's it all turned out for you? Great, I got I have my kids and it's going good so far. So um, finally, if you could just tell us a little bit about the GROW program and why you think it's important and, and you know what it does for these kids. Well, most of these kids, we have it's, it's a gang unit. We have 24 kids, we hold 24 beds. Um, a lot of these kids come from different gangs. Um, we have GDs, IGDs, IVLs, Crips, Bloods, um, Sir 13s. And in a regular population, these kids would have never got have a chance to to coincide with other gang members. On our unit, they really have no choice. So you see Vice Lord, you see GDs playing basketball together, playing cards. And and out in the real world, they probably would have never did that. And we, I mean, we teach them that we all bleed red blood. You know, so it doesn't make no difference what color nationality you are, what color you are, or what your beliefs is. And we're here, we're here for a reason. Have they told you, you know, kind of what it's like, you know, hey, have they ever said, you know, hey, I never thought I'd get along with so and so. Yes. I mean, what have they told you about living side by side with their rivals? Well, when we first started the group, we had, I mean, it was it was critical. I mean, we had that, it was it was hard for them to be around another GD, being around another vice lord. I mean, it was hard for them because they were used to being violent toward that opposite gang member. Um, but we have study groups together, we talk together, and. Like most of the kids you, you see in our study group, they're vi we match them up, vice lord GDs. And it changed the attitude and the mindset of a lot of these kids. Any fights at all? You gotta well, have something. Well, we didn't, we, didn't have, we didn't have problems before. I mean, very rare. I, I believe our unit we have down here, 
it's one of the cleanest units out of all units. Um, uh, we had a couple of incidents, but it's not, nothing major at all. I mean, the officers here, most likely, well, they love to work A1 because we have, I mean, most of the kids we have, that mature, that, I mean, they're carry mature, so it's, it's not bad at all.